Sharpening Basics Whether sharpening sickle scalers or curettes, there are basic principles to consider prior to sharpening. These include instrument design, instrument grasp, stone grasp, assessment of instrument sharpness, the sharpening work area. The specific design of a scaler or curette will assist in determining the correct angles for sharpening. All dental instruments have a handle for grasping the instrument, a shank that connects the handle to the working end. Instrument shanks vary in design to allow adaptation to various tooth surfaces, and a working end that consists of a blade with one or two cutting edges. The instrument shank can be further divided into two sections. The functional shank, which extends from the handle to the beginning of the working end, and the terminal shank, which is the area of the instrument between the blade and the first bend of the shank. The terminal shank is a crucial feature of the instrument during sharpening procedures. It is the terminal shank of the instrument that must be properly aligned during instrument sharpening. Note that for a sickle scaler, such as the H67, the terminal shank is rounded. It extends from the blade and blends into the functional shank. For Gracie 1314, the terminal shank extends from the blade to the first bend. Both of these shank types will be important when aligning the blade for sharpening. Whether sharpening scalers or curettes, the instrument grasp will be identical. In your non-dominant hand, hold the instrument vertically with a secure palm grasp. The blade to be sharpened should be at the bottom with the toe pointed toward you. Rest your thumb on the upper shank. This is very important as this will help stabilize the instrument when pressure is applied on the blade during sharpening. Resting your elbow on the table will also aid in maintaining stability during sharpening. The same stone grasp is used when sharpening either sickle scalers or curettes. The grasp should be on the lower half of the stone with the thumb on the edge toward you and fingers on the edge away from you. This stabilizes the stone and assists in maintaining a consistent vertical motion during sharpening. This will also minimize the tendency to move the stone with a rotating or rolling motion which may dull the end of the blade. Prior to sharpening, it is helpful to gather all necessary supplies. To begin, it is important that your work surface be flat. This will provide stability for your elbow during sharpening and allow you to view the instrument at eye level. A good light source and loops or magnification are vital in order to properly evaluate the edge of the blade. A sharpening stone that will best accomplish the task is required. It may be an Arkansas, India, or ceramic stone. Besides a flat stone, a cylindrical or conical stone may also be required. Cotton-tipped applicators, oil or water lubricant, gauze, and a plastic test stick will complete the sharpening work area.